Hello again, it's Chris. And we're going to do the, I think this is lesson five, I don't know, lesson something or other. Uh, let's sharpen up my pencil. We're going to do the uh, three quarter view um, of the face using the Andrew Loomis method. Right, let me just, I'm sort of half looking through a camera and half looking at the paper, which is a bit weird. Right, okay, so let's just get into this. So what we're going to do is start off with a circle. Is it a good circle? No, not particularly. Do I care? A little bit. But not enough to start from scratch. Right. So, um, we said that the side of the head is sort of cut off because um, the, f the face at the front is a little bit more rectangular. So what we need to do is we draw a oval shape which will divide the side of the head and the front of the head. Now if you want your angle to be even um, sort of more facing towards the right you just bring this circle in further up. In fact, it's a point in talking when I can show you. <laughs> like that. So this is uh, a face which is really looking that way. Um, so because we've done that, you, know, you have to make sure that this oval is like a complete oval. It's no good sort of cutting it off or anything. As soon as we've done that there, we need to copy the same rough shape this way. There will be a bit of uh, erasing and stuff for this. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Um, okay. And what we do is we put the brow line in on this side at this time, and we put a vertical line in as well. And you can extend this around the shape of the head. This becomes very uh, important in in showing you which way the, the uh, head is facing. So if you're looking down, you actually tilt this line down. So let's draw you another small one. So if this person's looking down, this is going to slope down. Right, so we need to divide up the, the head again. There's one there, and we need this one for the hairline. This one's for the brown line. This one is for the nose line. And again, we drop one more down for the chin line. Now, can you see my lines are converging ever so slightly? So that's just the perspective. In that, if you were to keep on doing these lines that go ridiculous like that, and it will go towards a vanishing point. Um, now, you only really get that with a head if the camera's really, you know, sort of close in on them. Um, with a normal camera, it's minimal, but you do need to sort of uh, bear it in mind when you're drawing. Right, so let's start putting these features in. Um, first thing we need to do is a center line, okay? Now, because we're gonna see more of this eye than this one, because the center line is gonna be here, now this is the forehead, and moving on to the top of the head. Um, this part always needs a bit of work, as does this part of the back. Even in the Andrew Loomis books and stuff, he starts cutting away. Um, but like I said, it's a guide. So this goes like this. Um, and then coming down from the brow, the face actually straightens off. Now you could tilt it slightly inwards or slightly outwards, depending on what type of face you've got, like with a jutting out chin. But I'm just going to bring it straight down. Nearest, damn it. Okay, now I can put the chin in. More lob cam. Okay. And we can connect this up. Now, this is where the jawbone connects. So, this is one of the reasons why I've got this uh, vertical line. I'm going to bring that up. And on this side, we need to sort of do it rough, roughly so it connects up like that. Uh, now, as we start drawing some of these shapes in here, there's one thing which is worth bearing in mind. Um, for instance, if you've got the keystone shape, it's going to be more like that in the, this angle. In fact, if you're doing lips, for instance, uh, this angle is a lot sharper than this angle. Uh, that's just the sort of natural um, byproducts of seeing it from this angle. 
So let's put the keystone in. So steeper on this side, shallower on this side. And what we're going to do with these eyes is, oh, hang on, we've, we've not put the swoop in. So corners of the chin, and we'll swoop this all the way back to this line here. So that defines now the side of the face. Let's rub out that. Let's get rid of that as well. So that's the side of the face, the side plane, and this is the front. And we can sort of do that here, but you wouldn't really see much of it at all. Um, now, um, what I usually do is create a sort of visor area, because it's, the eyes are the most difficult thing to do, and it's foreshortened like this. So I'm going to just make my eyebrows. These ones are going to be a bit, again, a stronger angle than this because they're tilting away from us. And what you can do is do like a sort of C shape here. In fact, rather than do it smooth and C, let's do it quite angular. It's a lot easier to follow lines than it is curves because lines have got a definite start and end point. I'll come back and do the exact same thing on this side. Now I can join up this visor still paying attention to the perspective and we need to sort out exactly where the eyeballs are going to go and just as in the first one they're going to be in the center so let's mark a center line which is about there and bring that through here okay get my pencil razor sharp how are we up to six minutes and 50 seconds? Not to put myself under any pressure or anything. Right, so eyeballs. Now remember we said there's uh, there should be five eyeballs going along this way. You could draw that, but it means drawing eyeballs in perspective, which is not that very easy. So the way I do it, I start drawing the nose first and then work back. So, um, Knock that back a little bit because it's a bit dark. So it can put the the bone in. Now if you did the bone straight down, it's going to be a flat nose. So unless you're drawing a boxer. I wouldn't suggest it. So you have to sort of just imagine what the angle of that should be. And then we'll put in this sort of shape here. And this shape here. And from there we can bring out the nostril. It's a lot more trial and error this uh, than, the, than the front view. Let's darken that. So we've got a rough nose shape there. Ain't amazing. Ain't terrible. In fact, let's let's just refine it a tiny bit. There you go. It's a bit there. Uh, now, if you remember from this nostril, you can work out exactly where the eye should start. So if we take this line back to here, that is where the eye should start. And you can even start to put in sort of some angles coming from the nose to help you. And on this side, well, the eye's going to start about there. You can't go any further in from that because this is actually going to be bone. Right, so let's put this eyeball in. always draw my eyes too small so whenever I'm drawing I'm just going make them bigger make them bigger so this is fitting almost fitting the visor so this one needs to do the same just feels really unnatural <laughs> but let's try and trust in the science because it is scientific I mean this guy is building on stuff that Leonardo da Vinci found out beautiful Right, it's going well up so let's hope it doesn't go wrong. <laughs> so we can put the tear ducts in, following that midline. And we can put the eyelids in. So remember we're using a little bit more angular on the top. And we can swoop them in a little bit. Depends what type of person you're drawing really. You know, what race of person you're drawing, how old they are all sorts I mean everyone's got different eyes this is my sort of standard eye <laughs> okay get rid of
rid of these eye bags because they're a bit, a bit too much. That's not too bad. Put the iris in. And the pupil. I forgot what that was called then. That's ridiculous. It's too late. Too late at night to be concentrating. I'm going slightly mad because I've been doing nothing but drawing faces for the last week. And I'm actually up to 170 odd. Something like that. Anyway, got the eyes in. Now I'll get on to the lips, right? Now there's another um, artist called uh, Hogarth. And what he does, which I sort of do, is he draws this shape. So he draws a cylinder. And he draws a cube coming out of the bottom of it in perspective obviously and this helps make the mouth and chin because basically the mouth runs along here and then the chin comes out here now i'll put this into practice here and show you get rid of that line because we don't want it now if you remember the mouth is about halfway down right so we'll put in this side of the cylinder take it along there and then we'll put our chin jutting out from it. You don't need to use this technique, but it's it's not bad really. I mean, you can tell it's already starting to draw itself. Right, let's uh, have a go at these lips, because these are difficult in three-quarter view. So you've got your philtrum. I always put the philtrum in because it gives you a nice center part to the lips. Um, now, if you remember, the uh, lips should come out to meet up with the iris. So it should be about there and somewhere off, off the edge there, in fact. So I'm going to make this angle, remember this whole steepness thing? I'm going to make this angle really steep, almost vertical. And this one a lot more gradual. See, that's really turning around that corner now. Let's see if I can avoid doing ridiculously pouty lips. Bottom lip. Mm. Mm. I'm not allowing myself to have any reference for uh, imagery here, which is a bit cruel, I know, but I like to I like to learn in the most difficult way. <laughs> bit of a shadow underneath it, and we can work in this chin. What are we doing for time? 13 minutes. That's not too bad. Um, now what we need to do is sort out this side of the face because all we've done really is follow this sphere shape and it actually needs to react to the contours of the head. And we'll even knock back this as well. Just a smidgen. So if you imagine, and you can feel your hand over, if you put your hand over your head, um, it comes down like that, then this bone comes out here to make the eye socket, because obviously the eye socket's there to protect your eye, it needs to protrude, so if you fell on the ground and uh, you didn't have this eye socket, you'd hit your eye. That's why pugs are so, because they've been so much inbred, they don't really have that protection, and so they get a lot of problems with their eyes. So it comes out for the cheekbone, so it comes back in and it, it more or less joins with the um, with the jaw. See, putting these like swoop lines in really helps with these different planes, doesn't it? We'll darken this. Now I'm just making this an extremely sort of basic shadow. I mean, it'll be a lot more complicated, a lot smoother, a lot more transitions than that. But it's really just to help you visualise this as a, a 3D form rather than something which is two-dimensional. Um, right, the next thing to do is the ear. Right, so this is the jawbone. This might be a tiny bit far back. We can bring it forward just a tiny bit. Because the ear always hangs off the sort of back of the jawbone. Now, if you remember... Let's make these nostrils a bit darker. I'm terrified of going over something and ruining it. Yeah, whatever. 
live dangerously. Um, so bottom of ear goes to bottom of nose, top of ear goes to top of brow, right? And you want to put a backwards tilt to to the ear. It doesn't tilt forward. It doesn't. It's not sort of stuck on sideways. It's just it's got a slight backwards tilt to it. And you put that bit in. And I do not have a clue what the areas of the ears are called. They're just freaky, aren't they? Mm, not the best ear in the world, but never mind. Put hair over it. <laughs> right, okay. We just need to sort out a couple more things. We've got this part of the cranium here. And Loomis himself adjusts this as well. He just brings it in a little bit. And that's basically where the neck would start coming back out again. And also the top of the head can get a little bit too high. So what I like to do is just flatten it out a little bit. Keep it ever so slightly more angular as well. Like that. Shut up, Chris. You can do your colouring in later. No, I can't. We've come this far. Do you know what? That's pretty good. <laughs> I don't mean pretty good drawing, but for me, who's not the greatest drawer, I'm quite happy with that. <laughs> Excellent. Right, uh, before we go, I'll just do a couple more things. So, this whole thing with the uh, looking up and looking down. God, I'm casting shadows everywhere. Right. So, we'll do this a lot quicker. I'm not going to do an entire face. Right, so, if he's going to be looking up, put the side in. Okay, now this is a brow line, so it's going to be coming like that. Remember to cut off the other side. We're going to have this. And we're going to have the chin line. Not the chin line, sorry, the nose line. And it's one, two, three. We need another one coming out here. Now, um, what you'll get is a foreshortening um, as things are going away from you. Just like with the train track, it gets wider and further apart as it comes towards you. It's the same here. Uh, you don't need to do it insanely. That's probably too much already. But you just need to, again, bear in mind that these things will start to sort of compress. Put the center line down here now and again that should have turned because that is now the forehead that starts tilting away you know and you can sort out your eyes and oh god that looks awful the eyes are going to be here the nose the mouth somewhere in between here and so on and when you're doing it looking down Oh, make sure you can see the damn thing. When the person's going to be looking down, again, you're putting this side plane in. You're putting a tilt on it. No, that's not right. That should be. Ignore that. We've got this one, this one. Put the center line in. Take it down. One on the bottom there, and one there. So now you've got the person looking down. Now, that isn't that easy to do. It really isn't. Uh, so there's another guy on YouTube. I forget his name, but I'll try and link it in with the video. And he's got quite a cool little technique, and it's really fun to do. Uh, he imagines, well, he gets you to draw like a sheet of A4 paper, which has got a sort of bend in it. And you'll see on his video, he does loads of these pieces of paper with these bends in them, in perspective, all sorts, right? And what he does is he puts the center line in, he makes a uh, two eyes, blip, blip in the centers, he draws a, a nose, making a sort of prism shape, and he puts a little mouth there which follows the contours. Now, if you that's a hell of a lot easier to draw than this one. So what we can do is put this center line in, 
stick the nose in because it's going to be lying flat like that. Put the eye in, put the mouth in, and you can really start to um, work around that. So let's say we we're making this like more realistic. Those eyes are too high for a, a start. So I'm going to come here. You could s start putting these bone structures in. Oh my word, it looks like um, the Grinch. Never mind. Yeah, it's like a bloody monkey. Hang on, I won't be having that. It's more like it. <laughs> um, but can you see? I mean, this is just a, a different approach. You can even put your swoop in there. Uh, but it's a bit quicker, it's a bit rougher. It, it relies an awful lot more on you knowing where to place features and stuff like that. Um, but you know, it's just another technique. So what works really well for me might not do for you and vice versa. Um, and I want to finish off this, right, with practice. Now I've already said I'm not the greatest drawer in the world. I don't make any bones to it. In fact, I'm more of a painter than a drawer. But if you'd actually see the amount of drawings I've done whilst exploring this over the last week. I've always drawn faces and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm up to 174, was it, or something like that? Look, I've drawn some of my weird um, paper people. I mean, some of these are, I mean, that's awful. But you know what? Never throw your sketches away, and I'm not going to do either. Uh, this was stolen from a World War II book, trying to work over photographs, stuff like that, adding in shadow, trying to do a difficult angle here. See, just, just keep going, going and going. Step by step instructions. So I'm going to staple this lot together, stick it in a cupboard, and come back to it and have a bit of a giggle. See, I mean, yeah, this is almost like full-blown mental illness. Right. <laughs> Next one we'll do is going to be, um, what is it? Oh yeah, we're going to be colouring up a black and white image. Uh, for now, goodbye.